Good morning and welcome. It is Monday, April 13th. Welcome to, to Title Talk, coming to you directly from my kitchen. And I have another one of my helpers here. Let's see if you can get a better picture of him. Say hi, Fanny. This is Phineas, my kitten, who is almost a cat now. In another month, he'll be a year old. He won't, he won't stay long because he has the attention span of a flea still. Anyway, he is an American Curl kitten, and he is a red tabby, and he does not like to read. He only likes to play and cause trouble, but he's kind of fascinated with the camera and the screen. So anyway, Phineas has now made his appearance on Title Talk. So, I hope you've all had time to read a lot in the past week. I have not because I am working from home, doing all kinds of things, prepping for a horizon system update tomorrow, oh, just lots of social media things for the library, selecting fiction books for you all to read, ordering fiction books, you name it. It takes uh, more time than you might think. But here is the one book that I finished this past week. It is called Where the Angels Live lived one family story of exile loss and return by margaret mcmullen it is a memoir and we had the author speak at the library last fall and i am very sorry that i did not get to go and see her this book right now is on the new bookshelf and it can be found at 920.0092 under the author's last name then it is about her family who were originally from Hungary and most of them they were Jewish and most of them perished in World War II but her grandparents and her mom escaped and they ended up in the US and her father had converted to Catholicism and her mother never knew that she had any family left in Hungary interestingly enough there were several male branches of this family and they all told their female descendants that they were the very last in the line and there were no other living relatives and this turned out not to be true at all um, the author for 25 years was a professor at the university of evansville and uh, she knew that of their hometown in hungary and she had surgery and while she was off recovering from that surgery, she found out of a Fulbright scholarship that was available for the university in the town of Pets, Hungary. Pardon my pronunciation, Hungar Hungarian. <laughs> it's just a very difficult language, everyone says, and from reading the book, uh, I'm sure that's true. Anyway, she got the Fulbright scholarship and she, her husband and their son who was in middle school at the time, and this took, happened, it began 10 years ago. They moved to Hungary for five months. Um, the son enrolled in school. She taught at the university and her husband got a job teaching English as a second language at the son's middle school. And while they were there, she began researching her ancestors and she found out that they were really uh, the most prominent family in the town. And there was one particular relative who she wanted to research that nobody had ever heard of back here. And she found out about him while uh, being in Jerusalem and visiting the Yad Vashim Memorial for Holocaust victims. His name was Ricard. Uh, Let's see, their last name was Ingel de Yenosi or something like that. Uh, the last name Ingel means angel. So that's where the title, where the angels lived, comes in. Um, everybody who has read this book, it just gets glowing reviews. Um, people like Joyce Carol Oates, Philip Lopat, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Uh, Pam Houston, the former um, Lieutenant Governor and former ambassador, ambassador to Hungary. They all just write glowing reviews. Um, it does have a family tree in the front, which probably, there you can see it. 
and um, you have to re refer to that a lot when you're reading the book because it's just very confusing. I did watch an author interview and she said even she has trouble keeping straight who all these people are. Um, just goes through their lives, uh, what she was able to find out about them. There was a memorial sign posted on the outside of a building in the downtown area where one of her relatives had lived in this city. Um, there are several other homes still, still there for them to see. Her mother had never been there because she was, she lived in Vienna until they had to flee and her father never took her back to Hungary even though all of most of his family was still there running the family businesses there. He would just go by himself and the house where she grew up in Vienna was bombed and destroyed in World War II. So she really focused on looking forward. She came to the U.S. She worked for the CIA and never looked back. But after her daughter went, then she did go and visit Hungary. And I say I am so sorry for the barking dogs. We have many threatening occurrences going on in our neighborhood this morning, according to them. I am not scared, however, because I have two giant guard dogs protecting me. So I give this my highest recommendation. The way I can tell if I've really um, gotten into a book is if it makes me dig deeper on the subject matter. And I can tell you that I spent a lot of time researching online after I finished reading this book, reading about the family. There's a ton of stuff that's been published about this family and lots of pictures. That is my one great complaint about the book. It has these kind of uh, fuzzy, angelic looking pictures. Like I know you can't see this at all. That's because you just really can't see them. They're almost like looking at the negatives of the pictures in the book. <clears throat> And I know, I understand why it's like that. It all fits in with the theme of how these people were just lost and they disappeared and the only real memories we have of them are really fuzzy. But I was able to see the various houses, some of them online, what they look like now, and the, some of her relatives' pictures are available. There are even some pictures during her time there as a teacher that are posted. So that was just really fascinating. So, Where the Angels Lived, highly, highly recommended, and it's not a very large book at all. Just a fascinating read if you like memoirs, which I do really like the original, the occasional memoir, especially a historical sort of memoir. And then I am, oh, about two-thirds of the way through, A Murderous Relation by Deanna Rayburn. This book is a lot of fun. Maybe I'll talk a little bit more about it next week. It's part of the Victoria Speedwell series, and I just love those books. And so if you're looking for a good series, check out Deanna Rayburn. She also has the Lady Julia Gray series, and I think those are available on either Overdrive or Hoopla. So keep reading. Uh, we are going to do an update of our public catalog tomorrow morning between 10 and noon. And the novelist features where it recommends different books to read if you like so-and-so um, within the catalog, that will not be available for a longer period of time. I have to turn it off or it will just break totally <laughs> during the upgrade, maybe. Anyway, I have to turn it off. So happy reading. I will see you next week. Take care.